Welcome back to the Thinking Mind podcast, a podcast all about psychiatry, psychology, therapy, and self-development. Today, we're going to be talking all about the Trieste model. The Trieste model refers to a pioneering approach to mental health care developed in Trieste, Italy in the 1970s under the leadership of psychiatrist Franco Basaglia. This model is renowned for its progressive and humanistic approach to treating people with mental health conditions, emphasizing deinstitutionalization, community-based care, and the empowerment of patients, minimizing patient coercion, involuntary treatment, physical restraint, and other harsh measures commonly used by mental health services around the world. Professor Alan Francis, who we've recently had on the podcast, said this about the Trieste model, quote, For people who have never seen the Trieste model in action, it might sound too good to be true. How can any mental health system help patients with severe and chronic conditions, with so few hospitalizations and so little involuntary treatment? I was once among the profound skeptics, but immersion during five visits convinced me that Trieste is the best place in the world to be a patient with a mental disorder, whereas visits to patients in prisons and on the streets of the USA convinced me that the US is among the worst. It is startling how well patients do when they are treated well in Trieste, how much sicker they become when neglected in the USA. End quote. With us to discuss the Trieste model is Dr. Roberto Medzina. Dr. Medzina is an Italian psychiatrist who is currently Vice President of the World Federation for Mental Health for Europe. Throughout his career, he has worked to implement and expand the Trieste model's humanistic and community-focused approach to mental health care, both in Italy and internationally. He has held key positions, including the Director of the Department for Mental Health in Trieste. Under his leadership, Trieste has become a global reference point for innovative mental health practices. If you'd like to learn more about the Trieste model, check out the link in the description. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy today's conversation with Dr. Roberto Medzina. Dr. Medzina, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Today, we're going to be talking all about the Trieste model which is something I'm very surprised that I've never actually heard about through the course of my psychiatric training. I learned about it from Alan Francis, who we had on the podcast recently. And the more I researched into it, the more I was interested in it, because it seems like the Trieste model, which obviously operates in Trieste in Italy, seems to be something of an ideal for how mental health care could be run. Uh, and lots of people visit, lots of mental health professionals visit Trieste uh, regularly to try and figure out what, what makes it work, uh, why it's so effective. Uh, and you've, had, you've been responsible for, for running mental health services in Trieste for a long time. I'd be very curious to learn more about the model and how it works, what differentiates it from other more common models of outpatient mental health care. But first, what attracted you to becoming a psychiatrist and, and, and mental health care? Thank you. Well, I, I was a, a student of medicine, and uh, of course, I was uh, wondering whether to go to some classical uh, specialization like uh, nephrology. <laughs> and, and on the other hand, I was uh, hearing about what was going on in, in, in Trieste and some other parts of Italy, because Trieste was what, just one of the cities where the movement called at the time Psychiatria Democratica it also became a formal organization, pushing the reform processes and the new practices forward, uh, was operating. So I, I was in, in my own hometown, Bari, in the south of, of, uh, of Italy, uh, just started to study medicine and uh, started to hear about what was going on in in in, in this uh, in this area in the area of psychiatry. At that time, uh, of course, the situation was uh, completely split, split in Italy between the typical academic course where you were trained to uh, uh, learn about classical psychiatry. Um, and and well, at that time dominated by uh, psychodynamics, uh, so psychoanalysis, but also new therapies like family therapy, um, systemic therapy approach, 
um, and also uh, sort of relational kind of approaches. And an important figure, as I learned, was uh, Harry Stuck Sullivan from the US, a prominent figure with uh, also with the experience himself. Uh, wrote many important pieces about the kind of relationship that you establish with the patient. And I was, uh, well, I started to to be part of the some training in psychiatry in the local university clinic. And, well, what I found very traditional kind of approach, including electroshock uh, and use of restraint, uh, locked doors everywhere. This was a very typical uh, condition of a, of a university clinic and and in this case this was the the door of entrance for for the asylum or uh, the near the near asylum which was in Bichelier. four thousand people there at that time one of the biggest in europe um private privately run by by a religious body so the effort was to stop people going there so there was some uh, attempt to uh, establish this clinic as a fortress to <laughs> to protect the patient somehow to go into the asylum. At that time, this was like a, a life sentence. Sometimes people were sent to the asylum; they can stay for the rest of their life. According to the law, to, to the to the the law that was uh, at the time operating in Italy. Anyway, I I started to to learn about the work of Franco Basaglia, who was the director in Trieste. Uh, a couple of years before my my graduation in medicine, uh, and I started to be involved in some local uh, uh, meetings of Psychiatria Democratica. And when I just finished my my training, and I did some training uh, post 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 graduation into the university clinic before deciding to enter the the, the, the post graduation course, I, I was also proposed to go and see some of these places. So I went to Trieste. I went to Perugia and also later to Arezzo, which were the three uh, avant-garde posts <laughs> were at that time within the asylums. So the work was done inside the mental hospitals, uh, trying to uh, revert the condition of the patients, uh, uh, which were uh, only oppressed by this kind of institution and, and denied as human beings. So I was uh, fascinated by the... Mm, either the humanistic and also, uh, or the political side of this kind of work and the scientific challenge too, because there was a, a completely different view of looking at the, at the person rather than at the patient with an illness, but a person with, in his whole uh, uh, um, aspect of human being. So including uh, suffering, mental suffering, but not just mental suffering, but in framing mental suffering within uh, a concept of personhood and, and uh, and, and, and personal uh, uh, life stories. Yeah, and, and I, I, I then finally, when I graduated, I, I decided to go to Trieste. I was uh, proposed to, to go there. Uh, there was some sort of recruiting, some people which were interested, some, some psychiatrists, young psychiatrists were interested in joining the experience that was already started for seven years. So it was in its full development when I joined uh, just to the final part of the uh, process of closing the, the asylum. And I went there in 1978, um, and I stayed there for the rest of my career. Now I'm re I retired as a psychiatrist. Uh, my last uh, work in, in the National Health uh, Service in Italy was a director of the mental health department, which was also uh, still a, a WHO, for the organization collaborating center for research and training. So, but I was uh, in a complete, uh, I mean, let's say continuity, my, my career, all this through experience accompanying the evolution and somehow giving my own contribution uh, within a group of people. There were some these prominent leaders after Basaglia, Franco Rotelli, particularly uh, Pepe dell'Acqua. And so I was in that, in that kind of uh, stream. And my understanding is Franco Basaglia learned a lot of what he he brought to Chester from America. Is that right? Well, Basaglia was uh, um, first of all was a little bit different from the typical psychiatrist at the time. So he was uh, staying a lot with the patient in the academic in his academic work, very traditional anyway. And Basaglia started to read uh, philosophy 
at that time there was uh, in Europe a full development of the the uh, anthropophenomenology was called at that time a very important course that started from uh, works of the uh, uh, of the uh, existential particular existential philosophy uh, from Heidegger uh, uh, to uh, well, first of all Husserl phenomenology of Husserl and then uh, uh, Heidegger and his uh, let's say scholars in psychiatry like uh, Bins Wanger or in French Minkowski. These were some of the names that were at that time uh, inspiring some of some of the of the streams in, in in European, particularly in Italy, France, and Germany. So Italy was very close to Germany, so psychiatric uh, kind of tradition. So these were some of the new things that Basaglia started to study and uh, understanding what was the the kind of encounter that you should try to develop with the patient. So first of all looking at the patient as a human being and in, in, in this existential course uh, in a world. Uh, so what was this world of the person, not just the inner world, but also the relationship with the outside world. So the let's say the opposition of this uh, human being uh, within uh, his, his own experience uh, in, in his life and his relationship with the, with the world. So, uh, um, and so the phenomenology was important because the instigation was to look at the person without uh, putting the uh, eyeglasses of, of psychiatry uh, immediately using the diagnosis, but looking at the person as a person in his struggle in his life, you know, to express himself as a human being. So, and Basali was very much in this. There was a whole Italian course of, of a group of, of, of experts of, of, of anthropophenomenology, uh, Carniello, later Borgia, uh, there were other people, but Basaglia was, uh, again, different. He, when he, he wrote some uh, pieces, very important, and uh, he looked at the, the person with his body uh, and the kind of sight that psychiatry to impose of the on the person, which objectify as a as a as a thing, not just understanding objectivity of this person. Um, and Basaglia, after then, he, he met uh, uh, the the reality of the psychiatric hospital because he, his career as a, an academic was uh, in a way failing because he was uh, uh, too much different. So he was uh, uh, asked by his own professor to be promoted. To be the director of a psychiatric hospital at the edge of the country and Gorizia, which was just on the border with the, at that time the Yugoslavia, uh, and uh, well, the, the rear wall of the, of the of the hospital was on the border precisely. So someone that could escape in, in Yugoslavia uh, when uh, uh, overcome the the wall. Anyway, um, so Basaglia started to with this shock of looking. Uh, how all these theories of the encounter with the human being were completely denied in a psychiatric hospital. So he saw people uh, uh, detained, people uh, confined there, people doing nothing, people restrained, people treated with shock therapies like uh, insulina coma therapy, for instance, and electroshock. And so he started to stop all this. One of the first acts was to deny, to sign, the register of uh, uh, um, mechanical restraint. He said, "I don't do that." So it was a shock for the, well, you know, the, the typical uh, 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 kind of uh, routine that there was in the hospital. And then he started to work alone. Then some of his uh, friends came to work with him, like uh, like uh, Antonio Slavic, and then later other, like uh, Agostino Pirella, um, Domenico Casagrande, etc. The whole group of Psichiatria Democratica. <laughs> Uh, apart from Sergio Piro in the south, was born in, in Gorizia. Gorizia became a case, uh, also very famous in '68, because it, uh, it in a way, had a sort of political side, because this kind of rebellion against the oppression within an institution, the uh, uh, loss of freedom, were resonating with what was the student movement at that time, particularly the anti-authoritarian uh, rebellion, uh, in many areas of the society, from school to uh, 
factories uh, anywhere. So, uh, and this was typical 68 kind of movement and, and the, the psychiatry contributed in Italy and it's also in some other countries uh, to be part of it. Uh, Basaglia was in a way trying to overcome the hospital in Gorizia, but he was, when he started to open the doors and adopting some of the, of the techniques, but he used the techniques, but he just modified them very much because he didn't, he didn't believe in using techniques as fixed tools, but in, in a process of development. Uh, so he started with the therapeutic community of Maxwell Jones. So the, he also studied, he was developed in Scotland and used in the UK, many places in the UK by Tom Main, David Clark and other people. And then uh, he also looked at the French sector uh, where there was a, this, this correspondence between the community sectorized services and the psychiatric hospitals, but the hospital was still dominating. And then uh, you mentioned uh, uh, US, uh, he went, when he finished his first experiment in Gorizia, uh, where he was denied to uh, set up the first community mental health center that he was thinking about, he decided to go and he learned about, by, by reading, what was going on in the US with the Kennedy reform, 63, for some years, and so he decided to spend uh, uh, six months in, in as a visiting professor uh, in uh, in New York. Uh, I think the Mount Sinai, if I remember. But also, he looked at particularly the community mental health center, and he wrote a, a very nice uh, letter from New York, discussing critically what was going on, saying this is an interesting new wave, but on the other hand, still. Uh, is a, is a, in the register of, of psychiatry. So it's nothing beyond the old style psychiatry, just uh, uh, approaching the people in their, in their living uh, 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 areas. Sorry, I have some problem here. Uh, in, their, in their community areas, uh, close to their living uh, environment. But the kind of observation, the kind of approach really was not really so different. So it was just, adapting to a new kind of social psychiatry that was still starting at that time, uh, the old ideas of, of uh, controlling the behavior, controlling the, this was the use of the psychiatric hospital in Western world, the still is. So this was the Basalia. And then you came to Trieste in 71 after this visit in the US, and then he was given like a, a green card from the local politician, the president of the province, uh, which was uh, con uh, anyway uh, 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 managing the hospital because it was a provincial hospital, uh, as all other mental hospital in, at that time. And and Basalia was uh, uh, discussing not just the reforming but overcoming that kind of institution. And this happened in nine years, from 1971 to 1980. I came in 78. By the end of of this development. In 78, important to remind that uh, there was the, the Italian law, the first law that, uh, in a way, uh, abolished uh, the psychiatric hospitals, saying that no new asylum should be built, uh, and the new, uh, well, the people in, in acute crisis should be treated in, in general hospital, small units, no more than 15 beds, uh, the kind of involuntary treatment must be limited to a week, not uh, hampering any other human rights or civil rights, as the previous law was doing. And the, and the, the, the norm was, the rule was to treat people in the community by community mental health services. This was the law, which is the great law. Uh, and uh, also even even unprepared, the country was unprepared to apply on the large scale. But anyway, uh, Trieste was at uh, the forefront of, of this with uh, some other uh, uh, experiences I mentioned before. So I joined at that stage and I started to see what we, what is a community mental health center, how the was this kind of blurring the uh, distinction between the patients and the staff. So it was very much peer kind of relationship uh, and uh, how uh, we can help a person uh, not using the power, but using uh, listening, staying with, being with, uh, being anyway, uh, 
concerned about the kind of life, the style of life, the quality of life that this person should have. So looking at where the people live, visiting people in their own homes and uh, wondering uh, how to improve the, their housing, how to uh, help people to get a job, etc. Excellent. You mentioned at the beginning, you know, one of the principles of the Trieste model is seeing a patient as a whole person. And if I listen to that with sort of almost like a beginner's ear, I think like, of course you should do that, of course. But actually knowing, having gone, going through psychiatric training, I know that doesn't always happen. Why do you think it is a problem? Why do you think many clinicians or indeed many systems are built to not actually take into account psychiatric patients as whole people with their own sort of rich, complex worlds? Yes, well, still the domination of the medical model in sense of biomedical model particularly because uh, to be a, a real doctor, you should look at the holistic and holistic <laughs> view. Uh, even on a patient, you can call the patient, but you must be very much holistic in the approach. Uh, the medical model, particularly the one that was denied by Basaglia, was the so-called Psychiatria Organicista, so where the effort was try to find where was the brain damage. This was the the effort of the research at that time, or uh, of course more more you know in a more modern view, uh, what is about what's happening in your brain in terms of uh, neurotransmitters uh, areas and connections between different areas, etc. So uh, I think that this vision uh, puts uh, mental health on just on a uh, very limited side. I don't deny the importance of uh, biomedical research. It's very important, uh, but it's never really uh, resolved people's problems in their, in their lives and help to uh, uh, improve some of the symptoms, can help to reduce the anguish and the suffering of people, can help to establish better communication sometimes with a patient which is very much disturbed and or severe in this condition. On the other hand, medication don't resolve really the problem. Uh, so they can open some window in some other possibilities like rehabilitation, social inclusion, so you must look at this holistic kind of approach. What we learned in the last years is also to listen better to what is the experience of the person. The, the recovery movement, in my opinion, was uh, probably the most important contribution uh, to what I started to, to, to learn in, in, in the Trieste course of action, in Trieste experience, uh, where the, in a way, the, um, uh, let's say the the activity the uh the the initiative the leadership was on, on the side of the professionals particularly psychiatrists uh but after one decade or two we started to uh, uh, understand better how important it was to uh, focus on the patient experience what is uh, uh, uh what are the most important factors that are helping the person in a per, in a process of recovery, as as identified by the person themselves, not just uh, on the basis of the psychiatric knowledge that knows what is the best for you, but listening to the person in a in a in a in dialogical, uh, let's say dialectical kind of relationship, where I say something, you say something, and we find something new uh, in our relationship. That's what. We try, including the social elements, the social factors, social drivers, which are important uh, in your life. Uh, we, we call this like a, a, the, the reality therapy. So talking about what is your real experience uh, and trying to uh, uh, provide in some advice, but also uh, um, putting a, a lot of attention to what is uh, working for you in, in a positive way. Uh, Helping, what is helping you more? A friend, uh, a pet, uh, a work, uh, uh, having a, uh, having got a house on your own, not not anymore being dependent of, from a family, um, all these kind of things. What we started to say, the subjectivity 
of the person emerging from the illness and which was called in the uh, uh, American and uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon a uh, new uh, uh, wave recovery. For us was emancipation, was subjectivization, was this kind of words, autonomy, getting the autonomy uh, as, a, as a person and as a citizen. The social side still was politically intended and I'm very pleased that in recent years we were confirmed by the, for instance, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which is saying the same things that we were, uh, in a way, fostering uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in, in, the early, in the early days. Like the person must be seen uh, as, a, as a whole person, as a citizen of a, of a community. Uh, 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 must, we must respect uh, uh, of the person and, and support the dignity of this person and all the rights in all the areas of his life. Uh, despite, regardless uh, a disability, uh, and sometimes uh, a recovery also is defined by Anton and others, a life uh, beyond the disability. That's so. These are some of the co points of convergence between the, the work done in Trieste and in Italy within the old institution. Try to set up a new kind of services in the community that are related to a new kind of approach, mostly not just setting up structures and facilities, but kind of relationship which is slightly changing. Uh, uh, and on the side of the uh, patient movement, the, rec the recovery movement was saying, uh, uh, hey, nothing about us without us. Uh, listen to what we are saying. You don't have the knowledge, uh, an exhaustive knowledge to, co to understand uh, what I need uh, to, to improve the quality of my life. So this kind of sensitivity uh, must be uh, 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 taken into consideration. Uh, the political side is becoming nowadays more and more important because, uh, of course, mental health patients are part of the international movement of people with disabilities, uh, and so they advocate for their rights and they ask for... What is the difference is that we don't just uh, push the person only as in isolation, but we say in order to allow the person to take the power, to be empowered, we must modify, we must change the institution, we must change the practice of psychiatry, particularly community psychiatry, toward community mental health. And the difference is, I mean, psychiatry is the work done by psychiatric professionals in a community with a community while community mental health is the work done by a number of other components, which includes social services, NGOs, uh, third sector, uh, families, carers, uh, caregivers, anything, including the public opinion, uh, the lay people, uh, which can contribute to a, 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 an overall change of the mentality, which is accompanying, uh, coming together with the change of the approach in psychiatry. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like Franco Basaglia was the only person prepared for the new law introduced in the early 1970s because of the work he had done before. And of course, we've seen a pattern of deinstitutionalization in many different countries, in the UK included. But because Franco had done all of that work, he was almost prepared to go with that tide and actually create a realistic vision of what community uh, mental health care could look like, whereas other places were probably caught underprepared. Yes, well, mm, of course, uh, if we look at the situation in Italy today, uh, it's, it's, it's evident what the, the Basaglia work and also the law has, has, has anyway, produced so on the one end, of course, a, a great respect of the, of the, of the rights of, the, of people with mental health problems uh, and attention to uh, uh, reduce as much as possible the use of uh, involuntary treatments, involuntary care, coercion in general. But this doesn't mean that these have been overcome, particularly the use of mechanical restraint in many places in Italy, particularly the, the general hospital units, They even if they have a small number of beds, they use mechanical restraint very much uh, and locked doors. So 
Uh, yeah, it, there was a big, but anyway, there was a huge uh, 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 paradigm change, let's say, uh, of, in in the whole country. Um, the idea of abandoning the old institution was completely uh, uh, received by also by the by the public opinion. Uh, even a few years later, there was a number of research, marketing research, doing what, what was trying to understand what was going on in the, in the, in the mentality of the public. Um, but today services are working in the community. The, the, there is a very limited use of, of institutions. Uh, the forensic, uh, for instance, small units are very limited in the, in, there is a lot of discussion on it, but we have no, not anymore psychiatric hospitals for more than, uh, 20 years because in 2000. In the year 1999, there was the closure of the last ads of the big institutions, so we don't have any more. And this is this is in Trieste or in all of Italy? In all of Italy. No, the, the, the important is that Trieste is not Trieste is the forefront of this change, but uh, this uh, 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 was addressed by the whole country, and this was very important, despite the lack of policies, the lack of financement, the resistance of the traditional psychiatrists, the resistance of the administrators, because when you dismantle an institution, you touch a lot of interests around it, etc., etc. So, but uh, at the end of the day, this was done. This was done uh, in, in 20 years, uh, 21 years, exactly. And more recently, also the forensic hospitals were closed in this last decade uh, and substituted by small units. Uh, uh, yes, very temporary, temporary unit, temporary uh, of uh, admission. So this uh, is a big change. I can say not just Trieste. I don't want to support the idea that it was this was just an exceptional place. That was because of the kind of people and the kind of situation that was created there. But on the other hand, for instance, Brazil is a huge country that followed the Italian example and particularly the Basalia uh, teachings. Uh, uh, Basaglio wrote, uh, uh, went around Brazil in 79 and he, 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 he addressed a number of, of public conferences, publishing a, a fantastic book, Conferenze Brasiliane, translating some languages, other languages. I think also maybe uh, it's going to be published in, in English too. Uh, so Brazil today has completed uh, a reform that started in year 2000. Uh, there are a few uh, thousand people left in, in the old institution and a whole uh, system of services operating in the community without being backed by the institutions. So this is a huge country of 250 million people, which uh, without the money of a, 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 you know, a high-income country is, is undertaking a, a, such a substantial reform. So it's not impossible uh, the paradox is that the more this, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the richest the countries are, the more problem they have in, in changing. And because they invested a lot of money in psychiatric services, sometimes these are well specialized. Uh, they can do a good professional work, but usually they are fragmented. They don't change the overall system. They don't change the pathways of care of people from most of the times. Uh, look at the, the insistence of Pat McGorry uh, on, on, on young people pathways. Uh, in these days, we, we see we saw the, the Lancet Commission on, 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 on youth mental health, for instance. Uh, still, there is a case to try to promote a different use of mental health services across the world, across the globe, despite the increasing uh, knowledge on many aspects of care uh, 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 and many aspects of the disorders. So this was, this was Italy. Uh, Trieste is, uh, still is, I say still because after four or five years, we had a process of in involution due to political conditions. Uh, the support that was going on for 50 years is now reducing a lot because Trieste is still uh, challenging the privatization of mental health care. It's a, it's a pure public system. Uh, where everyone can access, uh, it's it's easy uh, uh, access system. 
uh, with open doors, etc. It's a public uh, service. So, and this is a complete clash with what's a privatization, the neoliberal kind of trends which are today. So there is a political um, backlash now, and also uh, 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 my colleagues, which are working today, they, in a way they are not supported, and they are uh, facing a number of challenges, uh, reducing reduction, re reduction of, of resources, uh, but also uh, not being supported in what they are doing. Uh, so lack of confidence uh, and demoralization, uh, and at the end, lack of leadership. So because the leaders have been substituted and, and many of them don't have really the continuity of the history and the knowledge that came out from Azalia and all this course of, of, of action across the years. So this is to, to frame the, the, the situation today. But regardless <laughs> uh, this this aspect, I can say that Trieste has demonstrated that it is possible to live for 50 years now without a mental hospital in a medium-sized city, uh, providing care uh, in real time because we don't have, we didn't have, now there are coming uh, waiting lists for accessing the community services. People can just go to a community mental health center and be heard in real time, uh, receive a first contact, first assessment, etc., cetera, and, and start to develop a relationship. With the continuity of care, it's another important aspect. Uh, that means that the same team is following you, despite that this team has to develop some particular functions or specialization, but we don't, didn't divide and fragment the teams. We are very much supporting a, a generic team working on the overall mm, life, let's say, whole life of, of that particular person that knows that person and establish a relationship based on trust between the person and the patient, the person. Uh, with mental health problems and, and, and service, and but some particular case manager, but also the service as a whole, because they know that they can go there whenever they want, whenever they need it, uh, and they are supported in their own homes. So we have incorporated a number of these clinical aspects of community psychiatry that you can find in parts of the world, but adding the social side, for instance, housing developed through personal budgets, personal plans in, to, toward independent housing instead of providing residential, typical residential facilities, group homes, big sites, etc. But moving the person as much as possible toward uh, individual supports that allows you to, uh, to, to uh, uh, have your better, uh, a better quality of life in your, in your house or in the place where you can live with one or two other fellows. Um, fellow companions. Um, uh, the, the, the work was very important, the development of social cooperative movement started in Trieste. The first cooperative, work cooperative, started in 1972 to provide uh, work, real work, to the patient that were cleaning, that were cleaning the hospital for nothing or for a pack of cigarettes, recognizing the right for them to have a salary to be organized in a social cooperative, that means that they share the management of the cooperative, they are members, etc. And this, there is now today a movement of 8,000 cooperatives across the country, uh, which are entering the social kind of aspect of work, uh, contributing the, with the social value of integrating people with disabilities, not just mental health, but also other kind of physical and mental, intellectual disabilities, etc. So, yeah, these are the aspects of a holistic approach to care that looks at the person in his subjectivity, so favoring uh, this kind of uh, individual, individual approach based on trust, but also uh, uh, allowing the person to uh, fulfill uh, uh, his uh, expect expectations about recovery, about social inclusion, etc., etc. Uh, and so as a result, in Trista, as you said, a medium-sized city, you don't require a mental health hospital. You don't require involuntary admission to a mental health hospital, involuntary treatment, mechanical restraint, all of these things, which in the UK we've been accustomed to thinking of as kind of necessary evils of treating people with severe mental health conditions. These, these are something that 
you don't use interest at all, is that right? Uh, involuntary treatment, according to the new law that was established in 78, are limited. Trieste was using one of the lowest ratio of involuntary treatment. These are un intended as the last resort. So when the service tried and tried to establish a, a relationship and to engage the person in a in a therapeutic uh, uh, program, and and this has failed. So it's more a declaration of a service failure <laughs> rather than uh, 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 the uh, seriousness of the illness. Let's say so. It's it's about so it's the responsibility of the service to do this. But saying that, it's a very much reduced number of people. When I was uh, director of the services, um, one of the last few years, for instance, we had 18, 19 people per year in the city of Trieste, which were treated involuntarily for uh, no more than 10 days, so usually a week. or um, So that that's still a little bit well, increasing, but not that much. Uh, uh, it's one of the most important results. Limitation of suicide, reduction of suicide, very important. Because the more you are embedded in the community, the easier is the kind of access you can uh, uh, promote to, to, the, to the people in need. The, the lower uh, threshold you have to access the care, uh, it's better for, for preventing, of course, suicide and other things like that. Uh, yeah, these are some of the things. The typical, well, the, the, the pillar of, the, of this organization is the community mental health center open 24 hours with beds or accommodating people in crisis rather than using using the hospital beds for a typical admission. Even if we have a small unit in general hospital with six, seven beds now, uh, which is used also by the, another city nearby, Sigorizia, um, but the effort is to use the beds of the center rather than to rely on the typical kind of uh, uh, hospital admission. And, and, and also in the idea that your team is based in the center. So when you're in crisis, you must be followed by the same professionals that, where you have established some relationship before. So vastly reduced inpatient stays, vastly reduced use of involuntary treatment, reduced suicide rate. What about the use of medication? Has that been looked at? Do you guys, would you guys use medication in similar in amounts and similar doses, or is there a difference there? <laughs> Okay, we, we made a, a, a comparison in, a, in Italian research with other about 12 sites uh, about the uh, first episode of crisis, psychiatric crisis in the, in the uh, whole of Italy. And the comparison was that, well, showed that uh, the community mental health center used the half of, of uh, uh, daily dose of haloperidol equivalent than a typical hospital unit. So this was an example. Also in the in the follow up, and uh, this would continue the follow up. So uh, and another interesting data was that uh, the proxy of overcoming the crisis was the establishment of a, a, a trusty relationship with the person. The the, the person with people had within the first month of of work uh, established a, a trusty relationship with the service. They overcome the crisis much quicker. This was a, a significant, a statistically significant difference with, with, with the, the rest of the, of the sample. Um, and also another important uh, learning that we had from that research was that the wider you have your approach, so including the social components, as I mentioned, and not just a clinical intervention, uh, uh, also, again, you have less uh, 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 um, um, relapses and quicker resolution of crisis. So this is an example, but medication are used. They are used. We did a, an, an active work to reduce, for instance, the depo injections uh, and to favor daily uh, use and, and self-medication as much as possible. So the self-admission medication or with the support of the family sometimes uh, instead of using a, a, a long uh, and depo injections and, and, and leaving the patient not uh, uh, supported the patient in, 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 in his daily life, but the patient is treated by medication. That's, that's, it's done. That's a typical kind of thinking. While we, we don't, we want that to have a patient engaged and also 
uh, in a number of programs, including socialization work, as I mentioned, cultural programs provided by associations with work with us, uh, rather than having the patient managed by medication in his own place, in his own, his own, in his own home or family, etc. So this is the effort's critical approach to the use of medication with some attention to withdrawing medication when it's possible, of course. And I guess one of the things the Trieste model relies upon as well is the integration of mental health care services with social care services, which for those of you who, for those of you who don't know, in the UK, it's very different. So those agencies are separate. They communicate with each other. Of course, they have to, but sometimes that communication can be very difficult and can take a long time. And importantly, social services, in my experience, can be even more overstretched than mental health services. And the amount of care they can actually provide is very minimal. But in Trieste, the two services are more or less integrated. Is that right? Yes. Well, of course, uh, we have um, mainstream uh, welfare services, which work for the general population. Uh, that are accessed by the, the social center of the municipality, run by municipality, also in some specific area like uh, teenagers, you know, adolescents, etc. Um, they work for family which are in some social hardship uh, difficulties, um, and we work together with them. But on the other side, when you start to have a different perspective from the beginning, from the start, looking at this person in his social context, what is happening? What are the components of the quality of life? Uh, uh, you start from the beginning to widen the, the view instead of saying, okay, I do my best. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a mm -hmm. psychiatric nurse. I'm a psychologist. I do my piece of work the best way I can. And the other things will be solved by someone else. That's a typical kind of fragmentation not in the service, but in the approach itself as such, so that we try to overcome. So, okay, let's have a typical, for, me, for instance, family session. Uh, we start and we have maybe four, five, six family sessions uh, looking at the, the person within the, the family context, uh, but the family is engaged also as his own problem are concerned. So, the mother is not working because taking care of the son, which is very sick. Uh, so trying to help the mother to uh, uh, have a job or an occupation at least, the father is very distant. So working with the family, uh, try to, uh, to favor the cohesion of the family, uh, looking at the subjective experience of the heavy burden that they, uh, they stand most of the times when a person with schizophrenia, for instance, they are, they are, is living in the family, etc. So looking at this holistic view is more natural to engage the social services because you already know what are the problems on turf that you have to deal with. Even if you don't have to deal with them directly, but you can, you have your knowledge as a psychiatric community psychiatrist that you can engage the others, the other services to be part of it an overall wider and com more comprehensive uh, package of, of care. So that's, that's the idea. Of course, some of the resources are run directly by the center. For instance, work grants for people in training for a work, they can be given by the center. Uh, you can approach a, a, ca a cafe or care repair shop where you ha have a good owner and you can ask the owner if you can take this guy and you, they don't have to pay him, but take him for, for training. And you provide to the guy uh, 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 this kind of work grant, some small amount of money, but it's significant also to recognize the effort he's doing. And this is very important for young people, for instance. First episode of psychosis, they maybe are withdrawing the studies. They have nothing to do. And we can propose, okay, let's stop for a while. There is the bar, the cafeteria run by the cooperative. We do want to have an experience in this group of people, etc. So this kind of instrument they have, there are some personal budgets we can manage for fixing the personal situation of people with more complex needs, according to housing, work, uh, social relationship, etc. That is an add on the standard care, let's say the clinical care. So the service must be in a way as much as possible 
equipped with a number of instruments and tools that can help to uh, widen this view also in the intervention. On the other side, of course, you must uh, engage the other services working in the community uh, and, and try to propose what we call joint care. I've seen, I noticed in my small experience in the UK uh, that it's very hard sometimes to have people at the same table discussing kind of how to join the forces and share responsibilities and working together for a more, uh, let's say, comprehensive plan for the particular person, rather than saying, I did my the, my best, then I passed the K, the pass the buck, <laughs> you see, to someone else, because I've, I've done what I have, have to do it. But in this way, we lose a lot of meanings, we lose a lot of understanding of, of, of what is going on in the person interior condition. Yes, that's one of the biggest problems I've seen in the UK as well. And a, a lot of the principles uh, of the Chester model sound very similar to the open dialogue model, which has come out of Finland. And is, is that a coincidence? Is there a historical, are there common historical roots there? Or did it, is it a case of separate groups? Uh, arriving at similar conclusions as to how best to run community mental health care. Yeah, I think I think the second you you said probably also well that you know the conditions in Finland were completely different than uh, in Italy where you have such a kind of density of the population and density of social relationship uh, etc. While in Finland is completely different situation, but it's interesting to say that uh, these are two groups that work separately without any connection the only connection can be somehow the relational kind of therapy they share family therapy as so, some so, some of the uh, the roots but uh, uh, trieste was looking at the community uh, as a resource not just uh, uh, as a source of problems or source of re referral <laughs> Uh, as well as the, the open dialogue is, is using the family, uh, uh, listening to the family as a whole, and having this dialogue within within a social group. Uh, I think that's that's very similar. M probably we have uh, some differences that I don't want to emphasize, but of course, probably we are we were more uh, active in taking decisions, and sometimes sometimes also taking the responsibility to do uh, uh, involuntary care in a different way, uh, while the open dialogue is more traditional kind of stuff. So you enter into the dialogue, otherwise you are out and you are, in a way, hospitalized in the traditional way. We try to find more probably a sort of negotiation, a compromise, mediation, uh, in the way that we also represent to the patient sometimes the risk of entering into a typical coercive kind of response. Uh, and we are, we are on the same ship, same, uh, let's try to find a solution together. There is this emphasis on trying to achieve a result which is uh, avoiding the uh, use of coercion, while the open dialogue is probably more liberal, more democratic, let's say, in the, in the approach, but can risk to split the patient into groups, while for us, Everyone, even the most difficult one, is completely the same that you and me, if we have a, a problem of sleep, go into the center. So that's the, the difference. I don't know if I gave the idea, but uh, because we worked, the initial, the initial idea was to demonstrate that you can do without the asylum. If you want to do that, of course, you must try to find sometimes compromises, negotiation, uh, uh, con contractual relationships rather than just listening and developing a dialogue, but taking more into the action side of the, of the, of the, of the, of the thing. When we talked originally a few weeks ago, you told me a lot of clinicians come to Trieste to visit, to see how it works. When people do visit, what surprises them the most about the system or what impresses them the most about the system? Okay, again, I have to say the situation now is a bit more difficult. But anyway, I think services are still there. They are operating with the open door. Uh, they are welcoming people. 
sometimes they can be more exclus exclu exclusionary, saying that they are not so open arms uh, for everyone because of the kind of pressure they have. But anyway, uh, uh, people are, in my, my opinion, they are mostly uh, uh, impressed by the kind of relationship, the kind of situation they find at the center, where it's a very natural kind of social interaction. So it's not a typical uh, bureaucratic place where you have a, a typical uh, a reception and you are uh, they ask you if you have an appointment. If you don't have an appointment, you are, have to take an appointment, otherwise you cannot access the place. It's an open place where you find the clinicians and the patients in the same place together. Some of the patients come every day to use the place as a social resource, but to meet others and to have a small groups or informal catch up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so the atmosphere is very different. The open door is is very different, of course, uh, and uh, no no use of uh, coercion is another important issue. This makes uh, Trieste particularly different from other experiences across the world. But also the social cooperatives, all the social uh, engineering around mental health, so the engagement of other people with uh, good ideas, or for instance, the, the guys that work uh, at the radio station of the social cooperative, they engage the patient in running. So this is some of the solutions that were found creatively in a way when, when you don't think to this person just as a someone bearing problems, you know, bringing problems to the society, to the service, but also someone with talents, someone with uh, some competence, with human skills, etc. So this is uh, can be helped by this wider vision, not just the patient and the treatment, but the person and the quality of life and the kind of social inclusion you can promote. And presumably, even if you looked at the model economically, and I don't know if it has been studied economically, but I imagine it to be quite cost effective because at the end of the day, inpatient hospital treatment is the most expensive. Has that kind of economic analysis been done? Yes, of course. Uh, well, we were surprised. In the first years, we uh, uh, made the first study uh, where uh, the demonstration was that uh, new services didn't cost more than the, the former hospital. Uh, then we had the, some demonstration that they cost uh, uh, about 60% of the psychiatric hospital. But across the years, I have to say, regrettably, <laughs> the kind of proportion is increasing in favor of our services. But it's not a good a good uh, uh, outcome somehow because this demonstrates that it's possible to reduce investment in mental health too much. Anyway, now last calculation was that uh, it's about 35-36 percent of the cost of the psychiatric hospital. So what if, if if that's the case? Then what what are the obstacles to introducing this kind of model more widely in Italy or in other places in the world? Changing the mind of psychiatrists. That's the point number one. Basaglia was a psychiatrist with a huge reputation, uh, academic reputation, but he uh, was really wondering if what he was doing was in favor of the patient as a person or just applying a, a, a preformatted knowledge to, to, to the case. So I think if you have an open minded, uh, no, if you are an open-minded uh, professional and psychiatrist uh, and you want to use all the resources that can be helpful to a person in his process of recovery and social inclusion, social integration, etc., uh, uh, I think this is, this is an ideal kind of approach. Uh, it's, it's somehow sound because you use the... Someone said the Trimbos Institute of the Netherlands doing a research called Freedom First about Trieste, they they said that uh, one of the most important aspects is that it's an, an, an ecological approach. They use the resources existing in a particular context, resources of the person, of the family, of the neighborhood, uh, uh, of the service, of course, of the service, and putting this in a, in a, in a, in a mix which is uh, powerful somehow, uh, rather than... Uh, uh, spending money into setting up some boxes where to put the person 
because this person is not manageable, is disturbing, et cetera, et cetera. So it's sound. Well, anyway, uh, you, you know probably that uh, uh, because I mentioned to you that uh, I'm somehow, uh, sometimes, well, in these days I'm engaged. Uh, just today as I talk with the uh, um, people in, uh, at NHS England, which are uh, supporting this pilot, uh, um, this pilot program for uh, 24 seven community services of new kind somehow. Uh, which uh, incorporates many aspects of what was our approach. Uh, it's not an application of the Trieste model, which is can be uh, very, very naive to think in a, in a nowadays British context, but uh, it takes the some of the principles uh, adapting to different uh, situation and uh, some of the pilots uh, will be developed in big cities like London, some of the piles, other piles will be developed in a rural area in the north of England. Uh, it will be very interesting to see how this concept of having your own service uh, near to the place where you live, which is easy accessible and provides immediate response in a wider view that is not just uh, focusing on your symptoms, can better help the development of community mental health care. I, I think so. I think it's possible. Well, you've seen uh, it. You've seen it firsthand. Well, yes, but of course, uh, when you have an institutional, very established institutional system, it's hard to say we will overcome this in a quick, well, quick time and etc. But on the other hand, let's start with doing kind of the right things uh, when when developing a community services. Uh, look at this can be increased in the capacity of taking care of the most serious people. Uh, look to what extent you really need to have hospital beds or better uh, address, uh, address the crisis in a different way and, and try to provide responses to the overall needs because when you have a mental health problem, you know very well as a psychiatrist that the stressors in your life they can impact even more than a person with more uh, established uh, defenses and <laughs> resources. Uh, so, of course, you are more sensitive, you are more vulnerable when you have a mental health problem. So, the more you establish kind of a uh, condition of, of life, which are helping you to have uh, your, your balance in your mind, your kind of uh, recovery uh, fostered, the, the, the less you need to be anyway dependent on a mental health service on a mental health system. So that's the idea. Yes, I, I look forward to seeing what the results of the pilot treatment are. And I also think it's just so important to know that something's possible. Like again, the consensus when I was training amongst myself and my colleagues was largely that a lot of the problems we've talked about were necessary evils, involuntary treatment, sectioning people, using sometimes quite large amounts of medication, extended hospital stays. And so just knowing that it's possible, I think opens up a lot of doors, even in someone's mind and in the minds of different psychiatrists. And then I think somehow then arriving at it step by step, you know, I'm sure it can take a long time and have bureaucratic challenges, but at least, you know, there's a path. So hopefully if people who are listening to this uh, work in mental health care or train in mental health care, Certainly, I'd encourage them to learn more about the Trieste model. Where can people go if they'd like to learn a bit more about it? Okay, we are we are doing a lot of effort to try to establish a sort of school. Uh, of course, uh, I did uh, for when I was director uh, for about ten years, nine years. I did a yearly uh, uh, school and meeting for the school, also presenting some of the best experiences in community mental health across the globe. Uh, in Trieste, and this was also used by World Health Organization to set up its guidance uh, that you can that has been published in 2021 for a good uh, practice services uh, according to human rights and uh, recovery. Uh, uh, it's still difficult. Well, our dream is try to be supported in this idea of establishing something like a school. Of course, the and and the, our friends from the from the fin from Finland, the Open Dialogue, they they were very able to 
first uh, transform their approach in, in, in a very, let's say, simple list of points uh, that can be implemented. Some of these points are more difficult, of course, like the dialogies is not that easy to understand and to, and to operationalize, needs training, etc. But uh, what we should try to do now today is try to abandon the idea that we had an experience which is uh, uh, changing over time, that was the reality, but uh, to uh, try to uh, extract from this the most important points that can be generalized, uh, what are the lessons we learned, uh, what are the solutions that can be modified but in a way uh, applied to, uh, 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 I don't say uh, uh, um, without taking uh, uh, consideration of the, taking into consideration the context where they've been applied, but on the other hand, to be such a kind of generalized solution that you can have in your, in your, uh, in your knowledge that you can adopt. I, I very much think that the work that should be done in the UK will be very important in the, in the next few years. We have also another interesting, uh, uh, collaboration in Los Angeles which started a few years ago, then was stopped by the COVID, now is restarted. Again, they have an idea which is even more difficult than UK because USA don't have, don't, doesn't have a system for mental health. It's very much depending on local uh, uh, conditions and different sources of financement to be integrated in an uh, overall offer. So it's uh, even more difficult also for the social context of cities like Los Angeles with the homeless, etc. But I think that uh, demonstration of Brazil I mentioned, there are countries like uh, Poland, uh, which are developed, which have developed already community mental health centers, joining open dialogue and Trieste approach. Interesting. And now they are skipping up this to uh, the rest of the country. Um, there are countries like Czech Republic, which are reforming psychiatric care in, 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 a, uh, in, the, in the middle of Europe, adopting the principle of Trieste. So I think it's a it's an it's an international movement, and we don't have a place specific place where to learn this. Uh, and Trieste, unfortunately, uh, as a uh, vast majority of people just speak speak Italian, so it's very difficult to to have an experience as a trainee. And, uh, but we hope that in the future we will have more, uh, will be more successful in setting up uh, a number of. Uh, um, well, let's say, uh, as a school, let's say. Anyway, I'm finishing a, a book in these days with my colleague Sashi Sashidaran from the UK, who has a great companion of work for many years in Birmingham. Uh, Sashi and I were uh, editing a book with more than 60 authors, co-authors about not just uh, the component of the Trieste, but the use and the adoption of Trieste principles and and uh, models uh, in many parts of the world and, and, and in Italy. And when is the book coming out? Well, I think by the end of the year, for sure, uh, by Oxford University Press. Uh, the title would be probably, well, Trieste, uh, Utopia and Reality. So <laughs> Wonderful. So we'll be on the lookout for that book. Dr. Medzina, thank you for spending some time with me today. Thank you, Alex. 